Hey, what is up everybody? It's Steven with Bama Salt Water. We're out on my bay boat today. Just launched here at Boggy Point in Orange Beach, Alabama. This is the uh, closest launch to the Gulf of Mexico, but this current is extremely strong. So it can be difficult at times like today trying to tie up. But we're gonna go out under the bridge into the Gulf, maybe do some Spanish trolling, maybe dropping some live shrimp down, who knows? But I'm glad that y'all can join me on this fun fishing adventure. Sit back, relax. Let's get to our fishing spot and I'll show you what I'm using. Pretty swelly out here, but we are out here. Bottom nose dolphin. Cool. But I'm just gonna do some simple trolling for Spanish mackerel with spinning tackle. And I like to do these type of videos to show you, you don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of complicated stuff to fish. This is an inshore rod, 3000 series Daiwa with 10 pound braid. I have 50 pound Yazuri fluorocarbon leader and this is actually a size eight Rapala X-Wrap. And that's it. Running this on a seven foot Crowder inshore medium power fast action rod. Look at the dolphins going crazy. But you can cast with it and you can also pull it behind the boat. Which I'm just making one cast just to make sure everything's swimming right. I'm gonna send it behind the boat. And it shouldn't take long to get a bite, like at all. But I'm just trolling it pretty slow, about three miles an hour, and see if something wants to hit it. I'm also going to throw out a half ounce white bucktail. So we'll get this jig back behind the boat as well, a little bit further back. Take your guesses now, which one do you think is gonna be bit first? I am uh, pretty biased towards bucktail jigs, so I think the bucktail is gonna get eaten. But we'll find out here. I was wrong <laughs> in a good way though because the x -trap got the first bite so either way we we're getting a fish on deck hopefully but I would have thought the bucktail would have got the first fish sweet nice Spanish mackerel woohoo I'm gonna go ahead and get you in the boat buddy there we go <laughs> nice a nice Spanish mackerel he'll make for some good eating on the x wrap so I guessed wrong, but in a good way, because either way, we got fish. A fish for now. But when you find them schooled up, normally you're gonna find more than just one Spanish mac. So let's get this one in the cooler and keep on going. For each fish, you always wanna check your leader because one nick in that leader and possibly you won't get your lure back or land the next fish you hook. But we're just gonna let this go back out again I literally just make a simple cast behind the boat. Probably 30 yards at the most. And we're back trolling again. That's awesome. Oh! X-Rap got it again. Okay. I may end up throwing an X-Rap on the other one. Here we go. Now you want to take them nice and easy because they have pretty thin mouths. So you can pull hooks fairly easy if you don't have any stretch or play a little bit of drag. But there's another Spanish Mac. That one's a little bit bigger, average size. Sweet, that's what I'm talking about. Another Spanish mackerel. Woo, come on, buddy. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, crazy getting it all over the screen. But they do have teeth as I reach near their mouth to unhook it. I don't know why I do that. Let me just grab pliers. Clean the screen off. I do want to say uh, Mossy Oak is a partner of the channel. And as I'm showing you this fish, nice Spanish mackerel, we'll throw them in the cooler. But their shirts, at least these performance shirts, they have a screen cleaning cloth inside of them. And that's what I use a lot. I wear glasses, have a lot of screens, and it's pretty cool. They'll be linked down below. You can use code Bama Saltwater on the Mossy Oak store, but let's get him in the cooler and get some more. So we have two on deck. Get our X-Wrap out. I went ahead and put an X-Wrap on the other one as well, but a size 10, which is, which is slightly larger than the size eight. Yo, know, I just now put that in the water. <laughs> okay just now like i want to see if i can leave that unedited i put that in went and did a circle around my t-top and hooked up without even doing anything so they're pretty stacked right here oh that's a nice one 
got that banner plane flying over. That's a nice Spanish. Sweet. Well, I didn't take very long. That was easy. Oh, and I like when the hook comes out in the boat. Sweet. <laughs> That's a ticket today. I may put the trolling motor down and cast. How cool is that? And you're allowed so far at the time of making this video. Oh, he just spit up all of those minnows he's eating. But you're allowed 15 Spanish mackerel a person with no minimum size limit in Alabama. That might be changing. I'm not for sure, but at the time of making this video, you're allowed 15. Big telltale sign between a juvenile king and a Spanish mac is that Spanish mackerel, the US version, the Gulf of Mexico version, has that big old dark sail on their dorsal. So we're gonna knock him out, throw him in the cooler. Get you out again. Easy peasy. I'm just gonna hold it. Shouldn't even have to leave the helm. Oh, on the turn, on the turn. Sweet. <laughs> that worked out awesome. I mean, catching these fish. Some fish, you know, there's a long period in between the next bite. This one here is just instant. All right, another mackerel, Spanish mackerel on the extract. <laughs> A lot of nice swells. Go and put this one in the cooler and get back after it. There's such cool fish. You better have a pair of pliers or D hookers handy because you can get hooked pretty easy. <laughs> there we go. But there's a lot of lures out there you can use bubble rigs, spoons, jerk baits, crank baits, straw rigs. It, the options are endless. I mean, when they're schooled up, they pretty much hit anything shiny or swimming quickly. Get this back out again and continue trolling. I may stop and cast at them, but I just, it's pretty swelly. So once you stop, you're kind of rocking all over the place. Oh, come on. They're smacking it. Oh, and we're hooked up. <laughs> Yeah, sweet. This is incredibly fun. And you know, the thing is, you don't have to have a boat to catch these fish either. I was out this morning on the seawall and had a bunch come up and uh, I missed the hooks on a bunch of them, so I didn't like come home with any. <laughs> but you can catch them from the seawall, the pier, jetties, the beach, and from a boat and kayak. Oh, come on. Fighting pretty good. Get in here, buddy. Yeah, that's a good one. Man, they're such gorgeous fish too. The colors on them, the shininess of them, even on a cloudy day like this. Uh-oh, old bottlenose dolphin wants to get it on the action, but he's not. There you go. And there's another nice Spanish Mac. Let's keep on going. Now they have these miniature micro scales that get on everything. So it's good to have a towel, a hose or something. I mean, they get on everything and dry up. <laughs> They're just super, super micro. It's actually kind of interesting when you uh, see a bunch of bait fish getting eaten. You can almost look for scales like this and normally king mackerel or some sort of predator fish will be around. Make another cast. All righty. That's a big swell. Cameras will never do the waves justice of what they're actually. Wave height is, luckily. Oh, that was neat on them birds. But luckily they're spread out. They're a decent height swell. Oh, come on. We found them again. <laughs> yeah, we got them again. Hmm. This is where the school is. That's not a bad one. Hold a little bit of drag as it hit. Uh, other than that, it's coming in fairly quick. Man, it was way out there, wasn't it? There you are. Another about average size Spaniard. This time of year, they're not giant, but perfect size. I mean, that one's the better one of the day, right there. That one's definitely the better one of the day. I want to be careful and not get poked, bit or a hook stuck in me <laughs> but this one will be nice 
for our dinner. I'm just spit up all the minutes, but a little size eight X wrap putting in some work. And it seems like with these jerk baits and hard baits in general, I don't know if it's just me, but the more bite marks it has on it and the more it's been used, it seems to work better. And my theory is, um, you know, no bait or fish is perfect. So if you have something extremely shiny, extremely perfect profile, I guess it doesn't look as realistic as something with a little bit of scarring, certain messed up scales. I don't know, but I think a used up, I think a scratched up bait or faded works a little better. Maybe it's just the luck behind it. <laughs> but at least we're catching some fish, I know that. So I could sit out here and limit out on Spanish the whole afternoon, but I think I've done, but I have plenty in the cooler. And so I'm gonna run inshore, get out of this swell, see what we can do inshore. So I'll see you at our another fishing spot in just a second. So we just came to some very nice secluded marsh grass, saltwater marsh, little bay water or brackish, and we're gonna throw some live shrimp that I brought. So I love the diversity we have here on the Alabama Gulf Coast. We were just in the Gulf of Mexico, and now we're all hanging out in these saltwater marshes on these transitional areas where they start moving out into the bay. And so if you target creek mouths, deep bends, and then when the sun's out, shallow flats in the afternoon where it's warmer, that's where a lot of the fish are going to be. And especially if you can find some moving water. We have a strong incoming tide today, but I'm throwing a popping cork setup with my live shrimp. It's just a simple popping cork. Makes a nice sound. And then coming down, this is the Ozuri 15 pound fluorocarbon leader, and it's about two and a half feet of leader. You adjust your depth to the depth you're fishing, and we're in four feet of water. But I have an owner number two kale hook, or inshore K hook, come up about 10 inches to a small split shot. And throwing it on the same combo we were catching Spanish mackerel on. Let's get a live shrimp out of our bait bucket and get fishing. For our aerator bait bucket. And let's we'll see, we should still have some live ones in there. Oh yeah, we do. Come here, little buddy. Turn you into some more dinner. I like the hook where the horn meets the body majority of the time. Going sideways in like that, and it looks very natural hanging off the hook. It looks very natural hanging below a cork this way. Now let's get it cast towards these grass edges. Oh yeah. That's where all the bait is and also where the predator fish like red like redfish, black drum, flounder, speckled trout like to hang out. Get that popping cork, just a couple pops every now and then, but let the live bait do most of the work for you. Something's playing with our shrimp. It's taking the bobber down like it is right now. We have it. Oh man, I think it's gonna be a little catfish. Yep, knew it. These are very abundant. This is a hardhead catfish. You do not want to get poked by them. They hurt. They have a toxin in their fins that really lingers when you get poked by them. <laughs> okay, buddy. There you go. Well, well, that was a gust of wind and I was looking away and got a bite. What are you? Oh, cool. Redfish, sweet. He's gonna be a little short of the limit, which is 16 inches minimum, 26 inches maximum. Three a person here in Alabama. Out of those three, you're actually allowed one oversize as well. But this one's not gonna make it. I just love how pretty that tail is, all blue. And he loved the shrimp. There you go, little buddy. Go get big. At least we caught a redfish. Sweet. Get another shrimp. Redfish is better than a catfish, no matter the size. At least a saltwater catfish. Boom. Right by that grass is exactly where I want it. And we have some bait popping up. I know some of you all have asked, like, hey, how do you find these fish? Well, my main thing, ooh, something's biting, is if you can find the bait. Oh, there we go. If you can find the bait, majority of time, you're gonna get on some fish. There's a reason the bait is there. Oh man, that's a nicer one. Oh wow, that one's nice. Couple dots on them, but there's a reason the bait's there and these fish have to eat 
they're constantly eating so if you're fishing in an area with no bait you're probably not going to have a high success of catching that's another nice one there you go and here i've seen mullet jump little pogies flip typically what i look for when fishing birds will tell you where the bait and the fish are and then seeing bait flip on the surface being observant will tell you where the fish are as well at least the desired fish and then other times it's just a matter of covering some water and another little tip i like to provide is find some moving water you know with some tidal movement very stagnant water yeah you catch fish but if you have bait cover such as this grass moving water you're probably going to have a higher success rate of catching not all the time because fish are they don't read a textbook they don't read the instruction manual it's all nature so sometimes it can be complete opposite but if you want to increase your odds of catching look for those three signs well we caught some fish plenty of fish in the gulf so i am going to probably head back to the boat ramp yeah what a beautiful day it is right now hard at work <laughs> i got got you on video Okay. This is a hunter with uh, Spotless Yachts Orange Beach, and he yep. comes to you, and uh, I mean, we're at my house, and he's getting this boat just shining up pretty. It's an old boat, but he's bringing it back to life, so I'll let you get back to it, man, Sounds but, so, but uh, it, is a, it is a lot of buff and a lot of work, so that's awesome. But I just want to show you, Hunter did an amazing job detailing the boat. It is so clean and shiny. I mean, look at that reflection beautiful on this side super shiny gunnels i mean this is a 15 year old boat and and he brought it back to life again and protected but i love supporting local businesses and also ones that do an extremely good job and is good at what they do so if you want to contact him and get your truck car or a boat detailed there's his contact info right there well, that was an awesome day of fishing i uh, got some maintenance that i got to get done on the boat so that's what's uh, happening today but i appreciate you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video that was so cool just to show the variety of fishing we have on the gulf coast here in alabama where you can go be in the gulf catching these pelagic species and head back into some nice protected coves when that wind picks up and still catch some fish so i'm gonna have to let y'all go we'll see you on the next bama saltwater fishing video most importantly, and as always, I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us, and we'll see you later.